Well, good afternoon. I'm Bonnie Browning, and I want to welcome you to our second AQS Guild Buzz with Bonnie. At these shows, we're going to be sharing with you some information from guilds all over the United States. And this program is sponsored by Genome America. My guest today is Beth Carlson. Welcome, Beth. Uh, thank you, Bonnie. And Beth uh, is representing the Annie Star Quilt Guild in Chico, California. Now, one of the things most people may recognize when they hear that, that city is that you were very close to the Paradise Fires that were there last year, weren't you? Yes, we were. Um, our, our quilt guild, Annie Star, had the privilege of being the main distributor of quilts that came to us from all over the country and all over the world. So yes, there are a lot of people who know about our guild. Well, and I know that Cindy Needham opened up her shop and was a collector of sewing machines and fabric so that we could put those quilters back to work, <laughs> wasn't she? Yes, um, she gave away several dozen sewing machines. Some of them had gone to her through our guild. Um, they were donated to us, and she had the resources for distribution. Yes, so well, we worked out fine. It well, was a pretty much a team effort. I know that she was um, glad that she was able to take that space in her shop and, and be able to help out. And I know that a lot of the quilters now are, uh, some of them have moved, some of them are figuring out what they're doing next. And uh, uh, again, it's another instance of quilters coming together to help quilters, isn't it? Oh, it definitely was. We uh, had about 3,000 quilts received and given away through our guild. Um, additional pillowcases, baby items, uh, knitted and crocheted blankets, fleece blankets, uh, just hundreds of items came to us, and it was an amazing little project. I mean, you know, looking back, it was immense at the time, but it was just another thing Annie Star Quilt Guild is known to step <laughs> up for. Well, it is, and, and I'm going to take a minute right now and talk about this quilt right behind me because it was made... Uh, when AQS did the anchor project after 9-11 and quilters sent quilts to us and we auctioned them off on eBay and that money was donated to the Fire and Policeman's Fund. Some of it went to the uh, program that trains dogs to go into fires and stuff like that to, to find people. Uh, and so this, guild, uh, this quilt is called the Alabama Sampler and it was bound by Nancy Gross uh, from Tehachapi, California, and it was quilted by Grace Hoya uh, at Butterfly Quilting there in, T am I saying that right, Tehachapi? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, and yes. there were several hundred quilts then that were donated, and we raised thousands and thousands of dollars that went to those funds. Um, and so we just thought it would be fun to get with the quilt guilds around the country and talk about many of the things you do because I know that our quilt guilds have a major impact in working with charitable groups all through the country. So uh, first of all, let's tell a little bit about your quilt guild, when it was formed and how many members you have. Okay, Annie Star Quilt Guild was founded in July of 1981. Uh, by 1996, they had over 100 members, and today's membership is 170 uh, members. Uh, we run on a school year uh, because we are a university community, so we have nine programs uh, and speaker nights a year. Um, we have one community service night. Everybody brings sewing machines, irons, um, whatever they need uh, for their small groups to make a quilt during the evening. Uh, we have a Jan our July anniversary dinner, and at Christmas we have, of course, a holiday dinner. Well, okay, and so, uh, and so we know you make quilts, and those are donated to lots of places, but first let's talk about this beautiful quilt hanging right behind you. Okay, uh, this quilt is our new Opportunity Quilt, and uh, it just debuted uh, in February. The members got to see it, and we have not had a meeting since. Um, but it will be uh, spending our next quilt, let's see, let me get this straight. Our next quilt show will be November of 2021. So we will spend the next year and a half 
selling tickets um, for uh, the lucky winner who will um, be taking it home at our quilt show in November. Uh, and our last quilt raised about $7,500 in ticket sales. So we're hoping this one will uh, surpass that. Uh, this one is a design by Pearl Pereira of 3P Designs. And it was made by a committee of about 12 women who each did a block. We sent it out to another member who did the quilting and another member did the binding. Well, it is a stunning quilt, and I hope you earn a lot more than $7,500 for this because those of us who know how to do applique know they uh -huh. did a major job to make this beautiful uh -huh. quilt. Well, we thought that our previous quilt had done well considering that we had the distractions of the campfire in the meantime. So we have this distraction this time. We'll see. We hope it'll be very successful. Okay. All right. Um, and so, uh, uh, what kind of groups do you donate quilts to in your community there? Uh, what, what particular groups? We give quilts to um, youth who graduate from foster home programs. They move into uh, independent living and mentoring programs. We give them about 24 quilts a year. Uh, the Salvation Army has a residential substance abuse program here in Chico for women uh, who are trying to get off of their um, substance abuse issues and move back into the community. We give them about 30 a, in a year. Um, we give Habitat for Humanity a quilt for their fundraiser. We give uh, other community uh, organizations are there's a small community near here named Ord Bend. We give their firefighters support. Uh, we've given the Silver Dollar Fair, which is like any county fair except it's an agricultural district. Uh, we give their uh, foundation board dinner and a uh, quilt for an auction. And last year's quilt stunned everyone uh, when the final tally in the auction was a thousand dollars. Okay, great. So, Pretty amazing. Um, we have last year we gave away 135 quilts. Uh, we have other projects too, other than just quilts that we give away. I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the beads and bag project that you do with your hospital. Okay. Um, Chico is a smaller community, and we don't have a hospital that has designated specialties. Um, but we wanted to serve a children's hospital, and the closest one is Sutter Hospital in Sacramento. So for their children's uh, oncology in particular, we make bead bags, and they are little eight and a half by 11 size bags. I have several here. Here's one. Mm -hmm. Here's another one with the dragon and a flying horse. I guess that's Pegasus maybe. Um, this one has little bears. So we make these little bags. And when a child goes into the hospital, they are given a bead. And the beads are a little bigger than these. This just happens to be one I have a sample of. And they are given one bead if they've stayed overnight, if they have a treatment, if they're having a procedure. And some of these children have strings of beads like this that they wear proudly through the hospital. And we make them little bags to keep their beads in. So if they make a return trip back to the hospital, they have their bag and their beads. And um, it's a program we have fallen in love with, and they're always, always so grateful to be getting these little things that the children can have. Okay, then I know that you do something else for children, and that is the dolls that you make and dress. Yes, the same hospital, um, Sutter Children's uh, in Sacramento, we make these little dolls, and the dolls used to be just little undressed dolls. We have several here, and someone got the idea the doll should have a hospital gown. <laughs> so the dolls go with hospital gowns. They have no faces. They uh, uh, The hospital prefers this color because it works for all ethnicities of children, um, so they have their social workers when a child is going into the hospital for a procedure. The social worker uses the doll. They can 
put whatever face the child wants. If the child is going to have some tube, they do that to the doll. So the child sees what's going to happen to them. Uh, if they are going to have a cast or bandages or stitches or a scar, they put that on the doll. So the child relates to the doll having the same procedure. What a so, great program. So about a year ago, someone decided the dolls needed panties, too. So they have... <laughs> It's really, it's a fun project. Well, it's a great program. And of course, you know, anytime you can alleviate the fear in children, that's a good thing. Yes, we, that, and that's what we want to do. We, ha we have one more little project that goes to the, or a project that goes, I, keep, I should stop referring to them as little projects. Because um, <laughs> they're important to the people that we give to, and they're important to us, too. Yes. We make these heart pillows out of fleece fabric, and children who have chest surgery or heart surgery, any kind of procedure where their recovery requires them to do some coughing, they're able to push the pillow against their chest, and it alleviates the pain from their coughing. So we make uh, these. We gave away, oh, let's see. Uh, we gave away about 150 of these last year to the hospital, uh, and then 145 of the dolls. So we're, we're working on these continuously. Their groups are getting together, cutting out doll clothes, cutting out the dolls. Someone else sews them, someone else stuffs them. And then we have an event where we dress them and show them off to the guild, and then they get delivered to the hospital. Well, I'm glad to see those sewing machines are humming, and we're going to take just a minute and have a word from our sponsor, Genomi America. Hi, I'm Adam Eddy from Eddycrest, and I'm the designer of the Eddycrest Genomi Exclusive Cabinet. This sewing cabinet stands out from every other on the market because it's made out of real wood. So start your next sewing project knowing you can work comfortably in an organized space with the Eddie Crestinomi Exclusive Cabinet. All right, well, welcome back. And so now I want to talk about what your guild is doing during this time that we're all staying at home. I know we've been working from our homes since March 10th, and I don't know about you, but I think everybody's getting a little bit stir crazy, so I'm sure they're working in their gardens and I'm cooking more than I ever cook. <laughs> and uh, So what's happening with your guild and how are you handling your guild meetings right now? So we have not had guild meetings in March, April, or May, or June, which is coming up. So we've been making masks for our hospital, like I'm sure um, some of the other uh, guilds in the country are doing. Um, we've given away uh, almost 1,500 masks. Um, they've gone either to our local hospital, to the Children's Hospital at the University of California in San Francisco. Uh, there's a health organization that has clinics in our county. Uh, we've given them 200 masks, which our members put together in less than a week's time after they had requested them. Okay, so, so I know that you have a program that you're doing now on your Facebook page. Uh, what is yep. that program? Yes, it's called What Are You Doing During the Quarantine? And our members are uh, encouraged to send photos of their most recent projects um, that they've been making during the quarantine, whether it's for community service or for their personal use. And so are they posting pictures on there then? Yes, they are. So if someone wanted to go to Annie Star Quilt Guild and look at our Facebook page, they could see our photos of what we've been doing. And so where does your guild meet? I mean, do you meet like in a church or someplace like that, that you have to wait until they tell you that you can come back and meet there? Well, that's an issue too, but we do when we have our meetings. We meet at the Chico Family Masonic Center. Um, it's a larger facility. We do have quite a few people come to our meetings, somewhere between 85 to 100 every month. Uh, so we meet there, and they are presently closed. So we are waiting for them to reopen, and we're waiting for our community to say, yes, larger groups can 
uh, start to congregate again. Well, and I think that's where we all are, to be honest, is they, right now they're just wanting small groups of people to get in, together in one place. Yeah. Um, okay, so just in closing, I want to remind everybody that uh, we are giving away the Janome sewing machine, so I want you to be sure to register for that. And the machine they're giving away is the Janome HD9 Professional and this is like a $2,300 sewing machine. So I hope that as you watch, after you finish the program, you'll go sign up for that. And then uh, we have an AQS survey that we'd like you to take. And if you watch this program every week, uh, like we hope we, you will, it will be on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock Central Daylight Time, uh, that you will take a look at the survey because we'll be changing that survey up some Right now it's one survey, next week it might be something else. So be sure to take a look at the survey and make sure that you've responded to us there. And uh, we have other things that quilters to do. If you're looking for projects, you know, we've been working with the Quilts of Valor for uh, the last couple of years and uh, you can always make Quilts of Valor. And if you have somebody that you'd like to suggest get, receive a Quilt of Valor, you can go to QOVF, Quilt of Valor Foundation.org is their website. And you can find all the information about the size the quilts need to be and how to suggest somebody and how to participate in making blocks or quilts. Oh, AQS2 has partnered with the American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine. They started that Million Pillowcase Challenge and we've been working with them at our shows, collecting pillowcases. And the good thing about that project is those pillowcases get donated in your local community. So if you haven't done some of that, be sure to turn in the number that you're making and who you're donating them to, to the American Patchwork and Quilting website. And um, they're simple. AQS has a pattern that we put together that's a simple pattern if you want a pattern for a pillowcase. And let's see, what else are we doing? Um, you'll find all that information though on, uh, on the website or on the Facebook page. Go sign up for this free sewing machine, take the survey, and I hope that you've noticed my jewelry here uh, because I think all of us are probably going to be wearing these for a while. I too have been making some masks for family and friends and uh, this is one I made out of some K-Facet and so uh, I, I hope that you will wear your mask when you're out in public and wash your hands and join us next week for another program. We'll be going to Springfield, Missouri next week. So with that, we'll sign off for today. Thanks again, Beth, for joining us and sharing about your guilt. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting us. And, uh, and I hope you all will pick up some tips from Annie Star Quilt Guild in Chico, California. We'll see you next week.